I want to paint John Flynn. John Flynn was a Presbyterian minister and he was the first superintendent of the Australian Inland Mission. Uh, he also uh, started the Royal Flying Doctor Service for which he is probably best known in, uh, in Australia. But uh, I have already painted uh, an icon of John Flynn but I don't like it. Not because I don't like John Flynn but I don't like the likeness that I made of him. He looks much too much like a former Australian Prime Minister. So I'm going to paint him again but where will I find a good image? Oh I know in my wallet because on the $20 note there is an image of John Flynn and so it's from uh, this image that I am going to try to paint an icon of John Flynn. There are a number of biographies and a lot has been written about John Flynn, uh, as has been my uh, practice with these uh, videos, I'm going to read in the first instance from the notes this time by uh, William Emelson uh, from the uh, uh, notes of other commemorations which have uh, been uh, prepared by the Uniting Church for its list of saints and people of uh, faith uh, in the uh, calendar of commemorations. So William Emelson has written John Flynn 1880 to 1951 was a Presbyterian minister, missionary and founder of the Australian Inland Mission. He was born in Mollyagull in Victoria in 19 102, after four years with the Education Department of Victoria, Flynn joined the Home Mission staff of the Presbyterian Church, working amongst remote communities. First through his successful publication, Bushman's Companion, published in 1910, and then through the Udnadatta Nursing Hospital, Flynn began a long career of developing services and ministry to bush dwellers. He was ordained in 1911 when he was assigned for two years to what was known as the Smith of Donesk Mission based at Biltana in South Australia. In 1912 he reported on the needs of the remote Aboriginal and white communities in the Northern Territory, presenting a vision of the church's mission to the sparsely populated areas of inland Australia. For the next 39 years, as superintendent of the Australian Inland Mission, Flynn was guided by the motto for Christ and the continent and by putting need before creed. In 1928, he founded the mission's aerial medical service at Cloncurry, Queensland, later known as the Royal Flying Doctor Service. This fulfilled his dream of a mantle of safety for outback Australians. From 1939 until 1942, Flynn was Moderator General of the Presbyterian Church of Australia. His image is on the Australian $20 note, and there are many memorials to Flynn around Australia. At Mollyagull there is a memorial with the inscription, Across the lonely places of the land he planted kindness and gathered love. The John Flynn Memorial Church in Alice Springs is his official memorial. Well, uh, I can probably add a lot more to this account through my interest, particularly in my younger years, uh, of the Australian Inland Mission. Also knew personally the successor to Flynn, uh, Fred Mackay, and uh, he used to visit our home uh, occasionally when he was in Sydney. And he would tell stories about Flynn. One of the things that I did learn not only from Fred Mackay but from other uh, 
padres who uh, visited us in our home uh, where my father was minister. Uh, if, you, if you got to camp with uh, John Flynn, uh, you didn't get to sleep very early. He was a, a great talker and there would be just ideas and plans for uh, the outback that he would uh, talk about interminably. He was a fantastic ideas man, but he was certainly not an academic. The, he studied at Melbourne University uh, at the uh, Ormond College, which was the theological college for the Presbyterian Church. But he didn't actually pass final exams. He, they, he says they had to let the slip rails down. And it was one of the most sensible things that the church did, uh, realising his brilliance, not as an academic, but as, as a minister and as a, a planner. It was a very wise move to let this man through, through the slip rails. As a result of his uh, genius, there are many things that still survive in the outback. I heard recently of the, the medical packs that are at every station and every centre, particularly where there is no other medical staff. Uh, it's an idea that was thought of by Flynn where you have all the medications that are required, but they're in uh, numbered compartments. The people who handle them don't actually know what they're for unless they uh, ring, call uh, the doctor who prescribes from the kit, and the kit is then replenished uh, later on. I've been doing some painting without the camera on, partly because I ran out of battery. But I've been reworking sections of this face quite a bit. I took out this eye and put it back in a little closer to the nose. This area here was the wrong shape. It's a very shapely mouth. So I've been working on this with the yellow ochre plus the uh, ultramarine blue. I added a little bit more ultramarine blue for these very dark pieces to accentuate it even more. I think what I'm learning is that this is the stage to get the face right and particularly for a face that people will know. Anybody who has ever handled an Australian $20 note will be familiar with this face. So it has to be correct. And this is the stage for getting the face correct. And I think I've got it about as close as I can to a likeness of John Flynn. He wrote a, a guide book for uh, uh, simple and basic uh, legal uh, requirements. While he was never awarded any uh, university degree by his own studies, he was awarded a Doctor of Divinity 
not by an Australian university, but by, I think, a Canadian uh, uh, organisation, uh, uh, theological uh, college, university. There are a number of biographies uh, written of him. Uh, Scott McFeet, another Presbyterian minister, wrote John Flynn, Apostle to the Inland. Uh, perhaps the better known biography is Leon Idris, uh, Flynn of the Inland. There are a number of uh, portraits, and I mention this because I guess that's what I'm trying to do, to, to, to draw, to paint uh, a portrait, an icon of Flynn. And there are a number that are in uh, prestigious places. There's one by Chester in Queensland. I'm somewhat critical of it. It puts him in a, a khaki shirt with an uh, open neck. And I, I dare say he did wear khaki shirts with open neck. But there are no photographs of him, even when he's out in the bush, when he's uh, uh, getting there's, there's a, a photo of him you know, stropping his his uh, um, uh, shaving uh, blade and he's dressed in shirt and tie and waistcoat and hat. Uh, there are, I can't think of any photos of Flynn in, a, in an open neck shirt. There is a photo of him in the uh, national, uh, 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 a portrait of him in the National Gallery in Canberra by Harry Hudson. And this has him in a shirt and tie and waistcoat. In this icon, while you can't see it very clearly, and you can't see it very clearly in the $20 note uh, sketch, but he always wore a waistcoat. Indeed, the story is that he had a waistcoat specially made with extra pockets because he was a gadget man and he'd have different kinds of tools in the pockets of his waistcoat so that he was ready to help do anything from you know, wiring a fence to, I don't know. Anyway, his waistcoat was <laughs> a constant uh, uh, clobber.
Another little uh, Flynn uh, anecdote. Uh, back in the 60s, I used to go with friends on road trips into uh, uh, Western New South Wales and into Northern Territory and uh, South Australia. On one trip, we had uh, driven down through the centre uh, from Cloncurry across uh, to the uh, main uh, highway and down to Alice Springs, visited the Flynn Memorial Church and uh, his uh, Flynn's uh, grave, uh, which has a, uh, uh, a devil's marble, huge uh, granite rock on top of it. And then we went down to Uluru, to Ayers Rock, and we were talking with the ranger there, his name was Bob. And he said to us, in <clears throat> one of the conversations we had with him, he said, the 1930s gave the outback three really important things. One was the kerosene refrigerator. Second was sunshine powdered milk. And the third was John Flynn. I was reminded of the sunshine powdered milk bit uh, many years later when I was ministering my first uh, congregation and we were calling a new minister to be a colleague and we were, uh, worked very happily together uh, and he uh, came from the Flynn Memorial Church who had surely been a minister there and he and his family moved to Melbourne and the children of the uh, household uh, could not adapt to fresh milk. They were so used to drinking uh, sunshine powdered milk, which incidentally tasted so different from uh, milk as we uh, <laughs> know it in normal life, uh, but they couldn't take to it. So they continued to drink sunshine powdered milk when they moved to Melbourne.
So, there's an icon of John Flynn. Uh, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a, a like and perhaps a comment. And see you again another time. Bye for now.